Welcome to the Data Cloud video series brought to you by Salesforce. My name is Simon Connock, Data Cloud Instructor here at Salesforce. In this video, we'll explore data ingestion, data modeling, and data mapping methods and best practices. So you're ready to start Data Cloud implementation. But before implementation, you need to consider how customer data is collected and will be used in Data Cloud. This is where data ethics comes in. When using data in Data Cloud, be sure to obey consent and the context in which it was given. Provide clear exchange of value for data. Treat sensitive data carefully. And collect and use only what's necessary and choose third-party partners who handle data appropriately. With proper data ethics in mind, start identifying the sources of data needed for your data cloud requirements. Now, your company is a lot of data, and the only way to find that data that you need is to search for it. Here's how to discover sources relevant to what you want to accomplish with data cloud. Firstly, interview business stakeholders and key technical resources. Examine internal documentation. Look for overlap. There are likely multiple systems with customer profiles. This is very important for the future. You also want to look for multiple purchasing systems and systems producing and collecting social and media interactions. One temptation is to rush to Data Cloud and start pushing buttons. However, it is very important to take your time in the data discovery phase. Time spent in data discovery will only lead to more success in using Data Cloud for your needs. Another temptation is to bring all of your data into Data Cloud straight away. Now, while Data Cloud can certainly handle that, this plan may lead to unnecessary delays in effectively using your data. Why? Well, you know, some data might not be relevant or initially useful and can jeopardize the overall success with Data Cloud. Start small and only consider data necessary to accomplish your current use cases. During data preparation, how do you begin to capture all of this information from your data discovery? Here's where a data dictionary comes in. The data dictionary is an inventory of all your data sources. It allows you to understand the system of record role of each data source, to build out documentation for each source being added to Data Cloud, to review database relationships, to execute data governance, which includes things like estimates of data quality, estimates of volumes of data, describe data flows, and examine source data overlap, such as recognizing shared data points and considering possible matching conditions. Let's explore how to create a data dictionary. Probably use something like a spreadsheet or a documentation tool of your choice to create such a data dictionary containing all data source information and details of the data that you're working with. Engage the business and technical owners of data sources to gather such details. Capture data source information like system name, how to access data in that system, how much data to expect, how often to expect it. Next, be thorough, be as thorough as you possibly can. Collecting as many details as possible now will make future ingestion and harmonization steps more accurate and much easier to complete. You want to gather use cases for your business stakeholders and capture them in the data dictionary. Name and number each use case, ranking its priority, detail what business problem it solves, list any required attributes, and note where the marketing action takes place. Next, you want to capture data source information, document the configuration process and connection specifics for the Data Cloud setup, record user information, including their roles and access permissions within Data Cloud, detail the access parameters for data streams, gather and specify the information required for each data source that is being integrated into Data Cloud, and ensure that all personal and sensitive information is handled in accordance with data protection and privacy policies. That last step is most important. Finally, capture details for data streams. This includes names, sources, refresh schedules, configurations, etc. Now, having done that, let's turn to the data mapping process. There are two main phases. In the design phase, you want inventory then inspect field-level data. Then, in the implementation phase, you'll configure mappings and relationships. Before mapping in Data Cloud, there are best practices to follow to ensure your success. Review all potential data sources relevant to your use cases. Analyze how data is mapped today and plan its transition to Data Cloud. Evaluate if the standard model meets your needs 
or if there are gaps necessitating extended data model. Ascertain a primary key or devise a formula-driven key. Identify any foreign keys within the data set and establish a system-wide unique identifier that will be mapped to the individual ID and be used as the identification number in identity resolution. When data mapping, always review automated mappings to ensure that they meet your requirements to support a lean data model and limit the scope of validation and testing. You really only want to map fields defined by your use cases and requirements. Now let's zoom in on data mapping best practices that support ethics, privacy and consent. For data subject rights, map all personal data stored in Data Cloud to the individual object to ensure it's processed as part of any data subject's rights request. And if storing personal data in another standard or custom object, create a relationship between the customer identifier on that object and the individual ID field. For consent management, if ingested data contains consent preference fields, map those to objects from the privacy data model or other standard or custom objects. Define appropriate relationships between objects storing consent and the individual data model object, or DMO. If you're storing consent on multiple DMOs, standard or custom, define the appropriate relationships between those objects. To enable unification and activation processes, you need to map your data correctly. With Data Cloud, the system can only unify profiles if they are mapped correctly to the individual object and one other element, a contact point object or a party identifier object. Mapping to the individual DMO is required for all data sources that have a category of profile data, as they're meant to represent individual people. Here, the reference to the individual object in other objects within the data model is the party attribute, the foreign key. Next, you need to map at least one of the contact point channel objects. These objects contain contact details for the individuals, such as email addresses, phone numbers, postal addresses, mobile application registration, and social media handles. The party identification object represents a set or sets of third-party identifiers for an individual. By identifying and establishing the correct mappings, you're improving data quality enhancing analytics, and consequently driving better decision-making processes across your organization. To learn more, be sure to check out our other videos. You can also search for topics at Salesforce Help, or come join us on the trail at trailhead.salesforce.com. Thanks for watching.